Hello friends and welcome to my Dota 2 guide on warding. This is part two, where we're gonna talk about the best spots and a brief explanation on each of them. But if you want to know more about the theory and the concepts of why you might be using different wards, then you wanna check out part one where I talked about all of that. So let's get going. Um, we're gonna start with the Radiant Laning wards, then we'll switch to the Dire side and kind of break down the game in phases on common wards you'll see at each spot. So. In the mid lane, there will almost always be one observer. There's no guaranteed way to know which side it's on. There are some tricks you can do to check. That'll be in a future video. Um, but if you had to blindly guess one spot, the most common would be over here because you can kind of place it from the tree. So people try to do it to not get spotted by, say, the enemy comes in. They place their observer first. If you, oops, if you stand out here, uh, they'll see you and then you'll place your observer. So if you're a slower hero, especially in the mid lane, you'll see them place it from the trees uh, or they'll wait till the runes start and then it could really be anywhere along here though the the ledge here and the ledge here are the most common the higher up you go you'll see more sneaky stuff trying to avoid a d ward like this you'll see observers like in the middle in the tower or like back here which this was by accident but actually you will see some observers like this and that's just trying to avoid some of the common d warding sentries that happen at the beginning of high level games but you may not have to worry about that depending on your rank Next, let's go to the safe lane. So you might use an observer like this if you're really worried about a hero like Marana or Pudge, uh, someone hooking you or arrowing you over this tree line and getting a big stun, or you're like over here and an arrow comes in from out of the trees, very little time to react, stunned, die. So this kind of observer helps you spot all of that. It's also very good against melee heroes that you don't want to get close, like Clockwork, Tusk, right? If you're a range support, you stick your head out, you get caught by surprise, boom, dead, or like, you know, losing a lot of health. This observer helps to spot all of that. If you are looking to contest the hard camp, but you don't wanna block it because you kinda of wanna use it, then you might see an observer further back like this. Uh, this is very common against roaming supports who don't do that much in the laning stage. They're gonna heavily rely on pulling the camp and roaming. This allows you to contest the camp and kind of see when they roam because they like, you know, maybe they do a pull and then they walk away. If you're going to be a little bit more aggressive and you want to know when the four support is gone or like, hey, as long as the offlaner walks up to here, we can kill them. This kind of ward that sees the lane can help you because otherwise you're like standing here and you don't see this far. This ward lets you know, hey, the four support walked away and this offlaner is alone. I'm going to now roam around and kill them. And even if I don't find them and I accidentally run to a four, I'm really strong, so I don't care. So this is a much more aggressive aggressive style ward. Uh, you don't get to use those as often in the safe lane because you're usually uh, weaker than the off lane. I guess that's not so true nowadays but uh, is the uh, general case. This observer you use against those roaming fours and when you're worried about early aggression on the bounty runes. So you place this here, you see people walk in during the bounty runes, you can avoid it. And then later on, you'll notice it can kind of see the camps a little bit, this one not so much, uh, but that way you kind of know when the four is doing something here, maybe when they're dragging creeps through here, uh, but more specifically when they're roaming to the mid lane because they can't do much in your lane. So you don't really care where they are here because you're just so much stronger than them. But the main thing you need to worry about is like, hey, don't let them gank you mid and then now they're doing something so that's what this observer is really good for on the other side if you are a soft support on the radiant side these two observers are a uh, kind of aggressive style ward if you have again those same hooks and uh, arrows that you're trying to hit people over the 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 tree line or maybe you just have really long range spells like Skywrath and you think they might try to like you know salve back here you can cancel it these are very aggressive style wards that are less likely to get got than these um, these do a very similar thing to see behind the tower but also allow you to snipe the courier so these are a lot more common um, one back here or here and that's why like usually if you get hit back here you're like okay I'm gonna go check this area first that's what these sent uh, these observers avoid um, if you're not so much looking for uh, harass under here, but you want to know when they're pulling the small camp, but again, not so scared that they pull that you need to block it, you can place this kind of observer to see whenever they're doing this, but also potentially see any couriers coming through. Doesn't give you a lot of time to react though, because it's already almost in the lane. So if you are going for couriers, something like this or like this, um, this is the very sneaky version that allows you to see the courier and then come react. And then people are usually checking this area first. Uh, so that's what this one's really sneaky about and this is really the same thing But just in the lane giving you the most time to respond and see it uh, but uh, You're moving it further down to hopefully not get caught But again like you know where people put their sentries kind of depends. It's all of these can be common. So all of them can be got um, This one is when you are 
Uh, again, trying to just spot them doing pulls, not that worried about it, but you do want to contest pretty quickly when they do it. Uh, but then the five might also be roaming or stacking uh, for whatever reason. This allows you to see it. This observer also very good for aggressive play on the bounty runes if you're coming in. So you just run in here at the start of the game, drop it, and then you kind of see, oh, they're just like standing here. Let's go wrap around something like that. Depending on your rank, you might also see something around here. This is what I affectionately know as the Guardian Ward. This is very common from Herald to Crusader. And the reason you don't see it beyond that is because blocking camps becomes very common. And so blocking and unblocking camps means sentries are in this box or in this box. And then if you're unblocking, it's usually just outside the box or somewhere like here or here or in the box. And you'll notice many of those cover this area. And that's why nowadays you won't really see observers in this area too much. Um, because many people are just preemptively like, hey, I need this camp. I don't even know if they blocked it, but I'm going to put this down. The lower you are, the less likely that's going to happen. And so if you're not blocking camps, you kind of can get away with an observer in this area. Um, it does similar things to the other observers we talked about. Mainly you see these camps, you can contest. And for a lot of like lower ranked play, sometimes supports don't know what to do. So they spend a lot of time here. Now you can see them and you can fight. But the higher up you go, the more people are properly balancing laning time with the, the jungles and not spending a lot of time here that you need to see them so much. And also because of the unblocking, it's not so common to put the observers there. Same over here. Uh, the, the guardian spot tends to be around here or uh, anywhere around here. So I see many of you just blindly put sentries here and it's always funny to me because you never see this at higher levels but it really works in crusader and guardian because it's so common to put observers in that area i don't really recommend it um if it's working for you and especially checking for the sent the those observers blindly also works then keep going for it you do have to adjust for your rank but uh, the higher up you go the less likely it is you find things in those areas so now let's do the dire laning side wards the mid lane can place it behind these trees or from these trees. So both of these are pretty common. Again, the higher up you go, you might see some stuff in here, but if you were gonna blindly guess, a sentry here or a sentry here covers the most common spots. If you do it every game, you'll probably get a D ward. Not that I fully recommend that. Uh, wait till we talk about the video and uh, how you can figure out which side it is. Um, but yeah, these are the two most common for the mid lane. Let's go to the safe lane next, I guess. It's really a lot of the same stuff as we just talked about, but on now on the dire side. So this one, this one, this is your like aggressive version. This is for spotting heavy roamers and like creep draggers uh, down here. These two, oh, something I should add about this. So the benefit, they all, these all cover the same stuff. So like these two versus these two are very similar on seeing this tower. This one is the fastest to put because you just come over here and you place it behind, behind the tower. So it's the safest to place, um, but maybe more likely to be found. This one is more, uh, it's like you have to walk further and you can come through the trees through this side and then place this one. So it's less likely to be found, but it does like very similar stuff as this one. Um, but also if you get caught here, it's super obvious why you were over here because there's no reason to be over here than to place a ward. I say super obvious. It's now obvious to you all as well. There's no real reason to be here unless you're warding. So if someone happens to walk through here and see you, then they know like, hey, there's something here. You also have to place this before it becomes daytime because you can see the tower like sees out this far. But at night, it doesn't. It only sees up to here, so you can place these. Um, whereas if you're like placing this ward and you're walking over here, they might suspect it, but also as a force support, you might just be like walking over here, coming to like block, cause scout things. So it's a little more suspicious of like, or a little more um, doubtful of like, oh, I don't know, you like, maybe there's something here, maybe not. Same with these. This one, you can place the fastest behind these trees. This one, you have to spend more time walking to, but uh, is more likely to avoid a sentry in this area, which you'll notice catches a lot of these common spots. Uh, this one is when you kind of want to see people coming in to do pulls and they walk in this actually I don't I place it a little too high a little lower so you can see like when the five like starts walking over to do a pull you get more time to react and come over um, but you don't get much time to scout out the courier whereas this lower one sees further into the lane so you can see the courier coming in but you get a little less reaction time if the five is coming through here to go do a pull until you suddenly see them at the camp though if they come through here you will see that uh, so this is another like version of the courier sniping ward. This, um, 
Another courier sniping ward that's very difficult to catch. This one is a courier sniper plus good for aggression. So like if you want to invade the bounty rune, you can come over here, drop this, and that way you can see a lot going on to take a fight. Uh, but if you get a courier kill or you get a first blood, uh, depending on your rank, this is a very common spot to then check. Like, okay, why did they see me? How did they know, right? Then like, this is the first spot. That's why this is like the next level courier snipe ward which is like people check here but not here and at the beginning of the game couriers don't fly uh you don't want to put a, an observer back here so many people put sentry on the cliff rather than down here to check both spots just because many people don't actually have the ability to check the cliff if you don't put the sentry there um and then this one kind of the same deal aggressive observer uh and also lets you see the camps but not so much this camp so it's more for the small camp but if you're the the four support that's kind of what you care about right you want to see them doing the small camp rather than this camp and the benefit of this ward and actually this one as well um so if you block the camp as a four this observer is like your backup if they do unblock the camp this still allows you to contest because uh, you get to see it happening and you run over. It's like double protection if you're really worried about the small camp. One more thing for the laning stage, if there is an invisible hero in your lane, some extremely common sentries are here and here in the tree line, anywhere really along here. And then a sneaky spot, uh, because you might be fighting for the sentries here and because they're in the tree line, it can be tough to fight because like you both have sentries down, but they find yours first and you have to like look around the trees and stuff like that. So if you want, um, because the creeps tend to meet around here, if you're playing against someone like Sand King, something sneaky as the position five on the dire side can be to place the sentry on this side, so you still get to see this area. They think it's over here, they place their sentries, but they're gonna need another one for this left side. Um, and then same thing on the, the dire over here. This is your sneaky version, and then anywhere in this tree line is super common. And if there is an invisible hero and sentries are coming out around here, then obviously be very careful about putting observers like in this area and this spot. Places I said could be pretty good, but if sentries are gonna come out, then those are naturally gonna get sniped and you don't wanna use those. As the laning stage breaks down, these are the next set of common warding spots. So let's start with the radiant safe lane support as you want to leave and uh, make sure your carry is safe one of these is pretty good so this is one where your carry can really play this lane a lot and your team is likely to rotate and defend um, better when the enemy does not have jumps and or your carry can't deal with jumps because this is too late right like a void spirit that gets spotted here against a drow like the drow is not getting out he's she's getting caught by the void spirit so those you want to be like putting wards out here further to spot those rotations. But when you have heroes like Juggernaut who are very safe, like I see the person here and I don't care. Like I'm gonna play and I'm gonna spin, All right? This is kind of good enough, especially if you want to fight around this area a lot. This gives them a bit more warning time for TP rotations and for rotations coming in from the, the side lanes. Um, these two are very good and very common because of that then like sentries are then very common in this area especially as people come to play this area it's common to put like a sentry here that's what this one kind of avoids by being not so good about mid rotations but you can compensate that by another ward in the mid lane somewhere and this will just spot like the lane stuff and avoid this common sentry um so they all kind of do similar things but uh you know different uh, avoiding different common sentry placements um this one, I feel like this one's kind of common to check. I guess it depends on the rank, but it does several things, right? It spots this area for your safe lane. It spots the rotations, that kind of thing. Uh, but like I said, I think it's pretty common to check, so I don't use it that much. Rather, I like this one as a defensive one, especially if the enemy has a lot of roamers still. You don't want them to roam between these two lanes. And when they do, it's good to come through here rather than like in the, the river because you're going to like catch people by surprise whose screen looks like this, and then boom, you're caught from back here. So this helps spot those kind of rotations. This does something similar, but more aggressive. So like your team's more likely to uh, perhaps make an aggressive play, but also they have roamers. Then this does a mix to see this area, but also see a bit of the enemy side. This is a even more aggressive version of that, which is common to check. So you better be ready to fight over this area. And then this is a deeper version, but less likely to get caught. Cause at this stage of the game, many people are gonna check the edges of the river. So something like a sentry like here or here. Um, so, if th these are nice because it's going to be a guess like whether they cover the cliff and the front edge or if they do that like something like uh, this sentry we have here then it's going to miss some of this upper edge potentially and if they put it uh, a little higher up to make sure they cover all of this then they're going to miss some of this edge down here so i can't guarantee it'll survive but there's a chance um 
putting wards deeper is not so common and not so good because it's still early in the game and you don't actually want to get caught back here right especially if these towers are up and like you don't want to bait your team into diving like oh we see this low health hero here like okay well like they're gonna rotate and kill you guys so it's not so common to put deep wards back here but that can also be why they then survive if you put a ward on this cliff even though cliffs are so common people don't expect a cliff ward at this stage of the game so then this one can actually be kind of good coming to the mid lane any of these could be common uh so if we're the radiant side this is a more aggressive version that is trying to avoid the enemy putting sentries like over here expecting you to have defensive vision you're trying to like dodge that you need it to be nighttime or to have a smoke or invis rune or something to be able to place these without getting spotted by their own actual vision here um, and then these far edge ones are a way to avoid the common sentries in the middle like so uh, so they're not going to see as much in the actual mid lane but they will spot rotations and they are likely to survive because uh, sentries tend to go in this area you might also put one up here which is to you know uh, play aggressive play the control this area see some of the mid lane I don't actually like a ward here because a common sentry placement is right here. And so because they're checking for the cliff, then they're accidentally going to get observers in this area. Uh, not this one, which is why this one's okay. But if it's going to, if the same sentry is going to catch either of these observers, you might as well put the observer in the best spot, which is up here. See, we're running out of time on some of these observers. So I'm going to pause the game uh, so they don't all die on me. Um, from the four side, these are more defensive versions. So if you lost the off lane, for example, and you have people farming the triangle and you need to protect it, uh, this one naturally does a great job, but is frequently checked. This one's further out, does something very similar, less vision and doesn't really see up here if they do invade and are staying here. But um, you can see people coming in from either of these sides, which is typically how you'd get into here unless they're coming from over here, which one of the mid wards might spot instead. So, um, Worse coverage, but more likely to survive. Better coverage. I mean, that's the trend you're probably noticing. Uh, the cliff wards will provide the best, while these edge cases are worse, but more likely to survive and avoid common sentries. Now, if you're playing aggressive on the four side because you're winning your lane, this is used to take the tower. You can spot rotations, people coming in, uh, kill couriers, stuff like that. Dive the tower when you know it's safe. Um, I do think many people are onto this, so you'll frequently find sentries back here uh, trying to look for this stuff. Uh, so keep that in mind uh whether you're going to use it or not this one's nice because you can place it from behind this tree line so even if people are farming here they're not going to know it's here and let's say they have an observer here you'll notice it covers this area so something you can do as a four is kind of like sneak your way around here maybe go through these trees and then place this one if you can't check this cliff but you think something might be there that way you just have to avoid the creeps but uh, you can place a uh, observer here pretty sneaky like um, but you can also just like check this area and then you still don't want to put your observer here because it's so common to check, uh, even though it's great for this area, right? Uh, I think it's obvious what it offers, um, but it's common. Uh, so moving over here can be good. Moving over here can be good. I think people are still catching on to this spot. It came with the latest map change, uh, but it's pretty good. It sees a, uh, a lot of this area. It is blocked by some trees, but it's pretty solid. And then um, again, the deeper you go, it can work, but it's less likely, and uh, we want to be careful about diving or baiting our team to dive. Um, I think this one's also good as an alternative to like this observer to spot like people farming back here and rotating in. Um, this one over here is pretty solid, I'd say, but just be careful you don't accidentally walk into the outpost. Oh, and that reminds me actually, so there is one more spot. If you lose your safe lane pretty badly and you need a defensive ward, it's pretty sneaky to put it in your outpost um, because many people just don't expect this. And because you've only lost your tier ones, but not your tier twos, uh, they can't cap the outpost yet and then, you know, naturally find your observer and many times they don't think to actually check this inner circle. Many common sentries will actually get the outside of the circle like this one. So be careful about placing it on the outside, but if you put it somewhere on the inside, it tends to survive and it gives you pretty solid vision of your own jungle. Uh, so if the enemy has been, you know, kind of wrecking you, takes this tower, takes this tower, and now they're living in here, any of these common spots will frequently be checked, but this one tends to survive. Now let's do the dire. Uh, you'll notice many of the same spots because I, they're good warding spots, so both sides can use them, really. So same deal. I won't explain too many of these uh, exact same ideas. This one's nice because you can come through the tree line and place it. Uh, actually, there's the same spot over here. And actually, over here is also pretty sneaky if you want to use this one as the Radiant. Uh, so all very similar defensive wards or a little bit more aggressive. You want to, like, see the lane, um, depending what your carry's doing. 
Um, if you're worried about roamers on your half of the map, these kind of observers work. This one's a little common, I feel, so I like this one or uh, this one to spot your own side. Same deal, losing your towers and the outpost can be good. This is, again, spot roamers, protect your mid laner. All the mid wards follow an exact same concept, so I won't repeat those. This one's pretty sneaky. It spots the, uh, the rune, kind of these areas, so you might see the uh, enemy radiant uh, mid, like walking through here, getting runes, farming this triangle, four supports coming through here. Not bad. If you want to try to play aggressive in their triangle because they have some farmers, this one, of course, sees a lot, but very common to check. So then um, many people will just put the sentry on here. So then this one will survive. If you're at a level where people are putting it here and checking the high ground, then naturally that's going to die. So then spots here and here are pretty good. Um, I think this one you kind of get away with because many people like to check this cliff and you can't really put the sentry anywhere in here or you'll block the camp. So it frequently goes over here. That's why these can survive. Later on in the game, people will be putting one like here and like over here. So then these tend to die. Um, but in the early game, I think they get by. Same with this one if you want to see a bit behind the tower. Oh, I guess that should also be included. If you want to put any behind the tower, that's fine. Same with over here. Um, a sneaky version, if the triangle is really important to them, but you like no one usually puts stuff back here, so you don't expect them to put a sentry there. Uh, they tend to put it like more at the edge here and here. Then this um, observer observer tends to go unnoticed and allows you to like see them jungling the ancients and walking to the hard camp and walking in this area, so you can then still jump people despite them doing their best efforts to check this area. These are more like defensive triangle wards, so of course the cliff. This one I think is actually better for the dire than radiant because as the dire triangle, you want to see people rotating in, but as the radiant, you kind of want to see like these camps a bit more, which this ward does not spot. So I think this is a better dire defensive ward. Um, here, you know, the usual, the cliff one, moving away from the cliff, and then the next level away from the sentry ground, uh, sentry, which will catch all of this. I like this spot a lot because you'll see the bounty runes, you'll see this whole little area. I, I'm quite a fan of this one. Oh, there's another one over here. Um, you can use this as dire, but actually this is better as radiant, um, because you see the outside. So as the Radiant, I think this one works really well because you see the outside like this, so you spot rotations into your jungle. But if you're the Dire, you kind of want to see in here, so then that one's not so good. Um, where else? If you're the Dire side, then this, really good when you're trying to play aggressive on the mid lane. So frequently after I've taken this tower and I'm starting to like move into this area, I like this one. You have to protect it a little bit because it is kind of common to get. Um, but otherwise, uh, somewhere like up here or here is good. Here near the outpost, um, is pretty solid. This one, this one, I like this one because you can like place it again out of sight. Someone farming in this area, you get to like sneak that in there. Um, if you're, if you've taken this tower, this one like starts to work out a little better. If you haven't taken this tower yet, it tends to be a little further back. Yeah, you kind of see people rotate in, but like once they're here, it doesn't really help you like actually siege the tower. So this is kind of better once you've taken the tower itself. As we get to the late game, it's kind of hard for me to say this is where usually you'll find stuff uh, because it really depends what towers have fallen, what heroes are in the game, what's you know going on. Um, so I'm now just going to show kind of uh, other spots that are deeper in the map because all the earlier ones we covered are kind of still totally viable in the late game and whether you use them or not just depends on the situation. So let's just cover some other ward spots now deeper in. So anything around in the back uh, tends to avoid very common sentries like here and here. Uh, this one tends to like try to get all these edges and this stuff. So this is a really sneaky one that many people, you know, these two sentries will be very common and sometimes they'll be like here and here and then they'll get this one one, but I'd say like these are more common uh, so then you can kind of get away with this one which it's not amazing vision but it kind of lets you see some sneaky stuff uh, whether you're dire or radiant um, these are pretty good for the dire when they're like trying to get some deep wards in and radiant these are used for like defensive wards as the radiant side but they're commonly uh, checked uh, either because uh, the enemy is like checking this cliff and this area when they're sieging and then other common sentries for the dire when pushing this area are like these so then that's why i think if you're trying to defend this and you need vision up here can be pretty good i mean these towers you know they're down by that point so this kind of lets you see people like setting up in the back you can also just try to put it like on your cliff uh in the front but that only kind of works if you don't have invis heroes. If you do have invis heroes, then they're gonna have wards like this or sentries like this. So then anything you put in the front is gonna be grabbed really easily. Um, 
because it's really common for the dyer to put something here when sieging high ground, you should get in the habit of putting like sentries back here. Uh, you want them kind of further back because if you put them in the front, um, it does let you see outside the base, but then it's close to the edge. So if the dyer is strong and you're kind of on the back foot and they put their sentry here, they'll just kill your sentry. Whereas if you put it back here and they they see it with their observer, but it's like, okay, well, I mean, that's kind of deep, you know, you're not going to like throw and die for an observer. Uh, or for a sentry, but then it does mean that you will have vision of this area to get when it's safe. Um, where else? Back here, as they push in for this tier 2, this is really common for the dire. So I recommend a sentry like somewhere in this area. Uh, and as a response, if you're defending this tower and you want some vision, anywhere along this cliff is good. And then anywhere like uh, back here or back here can be good. Sometimes people will put sentries here for this cliff, so then these are not so good. But a lot of times, um, you know, sentry on the cliff, so then you do get away with these two. Uh, where else? Back here, this can work for either team, anywhere along this ledge or anywhere here. Uh, actually, I guess I'll just place them, right? So anything like here or here, or like in this corner helps to avoid some stuff. Um, this sentry, right, if you want to get the cliff, you have to put it like around here, which does let you get this sentry or this observer, but not this edge. Then you need like another uh, sentry, uh, which again, you know, sometimes people have, sometimes they won't. When they siege this base, tends to go like here or in the middle. Uh, so if you're defending as Radiant and you want an observer to help you spot, uh, this one's pretty good or back here. Uh, also works and then the further back you go right this tower is down they tend not to check this far back so then something back here uh typically works out if you're the radiant you can use this ward like over here to spout to uh, scout some of this stuff because i think these kind of sentry placements are more common and this sentry doesn't get back here so this lets you kind of see outside your base the vision's not amazing but it kind of works uh it doesn't really work on this side we have this one or you can put a little further up to see like more this way uh kind of helps to avoid the common like sentry spot here but i do think like over here is pretty common as well uh, so you may lose that one. Anywhere in the lane can work. Though actually I'll say in pub games, lane wards are not as useful. Uh, the mid lane can be okay. Just be aware if there's any invis heroes, sentries in the tree lines are extremely common. Otherwise, you know, behind the tower is pretty good. Or just like, you know, here, um, same back spot over here. Uh, mid lane wards can be okay, but the side lanes, it can work. It's just not as common in pubs. I don't really know how to describe this, but... You're just not going to get as, like, fast of a reaction as, like, pro teams, I guess. Which is like, oh, we can see this guy in the, the lane. Like, go rush him. You know, and they kill him. And that's why it kind of works. But in a pub game, it's like, there he is. All right. Anyways, the jungle's that way. So I I don't find it as useful. I find, like, jungle wards to be overall um, better. But if you're playing against a team, or I guess a couple support players who are really good about checking the triangle... Um, or like jungle in general, then that's where like laning wards can typically go uncaught and they can be pretty good. Uh, some other ones, these are further out, but you won't really use these during the laning stage, but as the game progresses, no one's blocking these camps anymore. So then these spots, the uh, the old guardian wards, right? These actually become more uh, uh, relevant and you can catch people being really greedy, right? Pushing out, coming back, and now I'm gonna farm my own part of the map, but you can possibly like smoke in and chase them here uh, and vice versa, right? Your team pushes out your base, you catch the uh, the dire people like slowly farming out your jungle this way. Uh, this can uh, be good for that. Oh, one I forgot to mention for both teams, in the early game, this river ward's pretty good to scout this area, but as Roshan becomes an, becomes an objective, it's very common to put sentries in this area, like sneak them behind trees to keep uh, vision of the the Roche pit itself, invis heroes in there, or invis heroes trying to walk in, or any observers in the front. So this is the most common river ward, and it really only works in the early to mid game. Once Roshan becomes a real objective, which varies depending on your rank, but once it is, uh, I don't really recommend observers in this area. They tend to die really easily. And observers in the rest of the river aren't very popular because you can't see up the hills. Back here is like, okay, I've seen that sometimes as a very like weird, unexpected ward. And same with like down here. But for the most part, it's not very common at all. Anywhere in the middle, it just doesn't make sense because the common sentries that check these edges will find the river wards as well. And... 
this spot is just so much better than here. So like if the same sentry is going to catch both, you might as well put it up here. As the game progresses and we get deeper into the map, you might see some observers like this. So of course this cliff is great if you want to use that one, but the sentry here will be pretty common. And that's why an observer at this upper edge and anywhere along this staircase tends to be pretty good. And outside here, this one is also good, though sometimes people will put their sentry on the lower ground like this to get that and this area. Um, because this area becomes more common. Like in the early game, it's not as good, but as the game progresses, I think this ledge is also a little better. So then the sentry's here as a result. Where else? Behind the tower, it's pretty easy to sneak in back here and place this one or this one. So I do recommend as you're the dire defending this tier two, if you choose to do that, either a sentry back here or a sentry in either of these trees, depending which side you want to prioritize and stand behind. These are the classic, you know, put them as you siege, same as the radiant side over here and here. But the Dire has a unique aspect where, as the Radiant, you can actually use this aggressively. And you see some pretty decent uh, area in here. So as the Dire, you have to be careful of that. If you notice a support deep on this side, you may have to put your sentry like here or a little on this side or like somewhere back here, especially as your tower falls and you still need vision, you gotta check this corner and it's not just these anymore. Though, depending on your rank, not everyone knows about this. So you can kind of like default to these middle sections first. And then same with over here. Uh, you can put uh, one here as the Radiant, but actually this also works out quite well as the Dire. You can also use this pretty defensively because many of the Radiant sentries will be like here or here or like somewhere in this side or in this middle area. So it'll kind of like miss this outer edge um, and you can actually put your observer like back here or of course just further back. Um, that works as well. Any of these works for the Dire uh, if you're playing defense. In this triangle, of course, this spot, the cliff, all great. Um, but I think some of the most common sentries in this area will naturally be on these areas. And then somewhere like uh, if you're doing low ground checks, then something like this and something like this. Um, which leaves this area. And so this one's pretty good, I find, when people are checking these spots a lot. Uh, you still see great stuff, but of course, sometimes people will start putting their sentries here. And then I think this is a very uncommonly checked area, which of course it has like the worst vision out of all these spots, but if it survives, it survives. So that's pretty good. And then um, Dire defensively putting one here. Uh, for some reason, I feel that this is checked less often than this side um and i think it's because as you can see this sentry kind of covers this edge but depending if they're using this kind of sentry or kind of putting it close to the edge this can survive or maybe on this upper or lower ledge that can also work if you're the dire you can also just put it like back here or around here if you need to see this area and in a similar way on the dire side as these camps are no longer blocked this area uh this one is pretty sneaky but you know it's kind of awkward too uh, I think somewhere further along here, maybe a little better, uh, somewhere in here, the old guardian special, uh, becomes better as the game progresses. And then you do have the tinker ward spots, good against tinker, but good against any hero who's going to play the tree line a lot. Uh, people like anti-mage, people like tree protector, nature's prophet, uh, anyone who's kind of trying to like jump people in these trees and kill them, uh, you want to kill them. So scouting them out with these kind of wards will be great. It's not just for games against tinker, even though they're named after him. Uh, cause he's just the most hated, but it is, it's useful against other heroes who do the same thing. And then sometimes you're like sieging into the base. You can put things around here. Keep in mind the ancient actually provides true sight, uh, quite far. It's about here, I think, uh, in a circle around the ancient. So somewhere along the edges like there and along here, if you can like sneak in, Treant can do it a lot on the, the radiant side. It's like somewhere along here, oops, um, or somewhere along here. But I usually, by the time you get to that point, the game's kind of ending, so you don't quite need it. But if you're ever worried, right? I mean, a lot of times people put their sentries around the outside of their base uh, to catch uh, any observers in this area, which you use when sieging the base. But if you manage to break into the base and they don't notice, you can place one a little deeper and those tend to survive if they're not paying attention. So that's most of the common and uncommon spots. There are other places that I'm not gonna spend too much time on, like really next, next level things like this observer, which is like, you know, if they put their sentry on the cliff, which is gonna happen in many ranks, and they're gonna get this, but depending, you know, the higher up you go, then like, of course they're gonna put it over here because this is where you should put it to cover these other spots, which then allows you to do this very next level observer over here, which scouts this area. So it just depends on your rank that you may or may not need to do this, you know? Or like, I covered many of the common spots, which frankly, 
many people are just using cliffs, uh, Archon and Lower. And so like, if you just put them here and here, right, that's good enough. And then as you go further, I think you know more about the game to then understand why you're gonna do some like other weird spots that maybe I didn't talk about in this video, um, but that you'll know to find yourself avoiding common sentries. So you do have that flexibility. You don't have to use one of the spots I mentioned. And if I mi if I missed a spot that you really like and you think works, please let me know. You know, like screenshot it or something so I can see it. That'd be great. I'd love to know more warding spots. And that's gonna be it. Thanks for watching. Check out the last video if you want to know more about why you might use different spots. And keep an eye out in the nearest future. I'll release a video on how to tell where the enemy has placed observers so that you can look like a pro dewarding everything. I'll see you there.